This is Classic FM. I am delighted to welcome to Classic FM today Martinas, accordion player extraordinaire. Thank you very much for joining us. I think the first thing to discuss is the age at which you started playing this particular instrument, because for a three-year-old to be given an accordion is not normally what you would associate starting sort of a child's education in music to be. How come that was the instrument that, that started you out? Well, I have to say my first musical impression wasn't accordion and wasn't accordion music. Um, I saw a piano recital on the TV and um, then I started tapping my fingers on the table and saying to my family that I want to play. And I specifically wanted to play the piano, but um, they couldn't afford to buy me one. So I got a little small accordion as an alternative and that's how I started to play it. And I somehow never questioned why. I just immediately loved that instrument. I suppose because the piano, in, <coughs> there's so much light and shade with that instrument and with the accordion, there's some similarities with it, would you say? Similarities with the piano? Mm. Um, well, sort of. They share a similar looking keyboard, which is actually quite different. Um, but I suppose there was some kind of connection between the piano and accordion. And <coughs> is the accordion in your native Lithuania an instrument that, that sort of people they grow up with? Is it, it, does it have the connotations of being familial and celebratory? Uh, that's a good point. The accordion is really popular in my native uh, country, in Lithuania. It's being used for um, folk music a lot. And uh, recently it's being discovered as a proper concert instrument. So actually my first um, pieces that I played on accordion, they were folk tunes that I used to play and sing along. So that was my first influence. Well, let's talk a bit about repertoire because I would imagine that there isn't well, there is quite a finite amount of music at the moment for the accordion. How important is it to you and what steps are you taking to, to change that? The repertoire is still expanding, I would say, and the instrument itself um, is finding its um, identity in the contemporary uh, public uh, because most of the people still associate it with uh, polkas and waltzes and uh, squeeze box um, attitude um, and it's fine because it is what it is. I mean accordion comes from this background but there's also another angle uh, in this modern society when uh, modern contemporary composers discover this instrument and they start writing for it. And you can also look back to this huge amount of repertoire in the classical era, romantic era, baroque period, and um, you can transcribe quite easily those pieces on accordion, and most of them work really well. Mm. So it's nice to experiment and discover new things on, on that instrument. I suppose it's the same, we see it a little bit with guitar as well. The guitar repertoire is, is, is ever-changing. Why, why shouldn't it apply to any other instrument? True, but there's one very important difference between accordion and guitar and their repertoire. Um, accordion, as the instrument that we see nowadays, um, was developed around 60 years ago. So that's the instrument, that's its age only 60 years and the guitar was being played in I don't know in Greek times in antique um, times so I'm sure that there is much more choices for guitar and uh, there's also this connection as you mentioned of transcribing and, and, and using um, other instruments repertoire for, for guitar and the same for accordion. And it's, it's a lovely instrument because it does work well to be complemented with other instruments, but it can also have a spotlight on one player and that player can tell the story with, with, with no help from anybody else. What is it like to be, to have that kind of, um, as I what's they say, spotlight on you as a performer? Um, some people quite often come and tell me that, oh, this is like one man's band, one man's orchestra, because you play this instrument and you have all the possibilities of accompaniment, of playing melodies and polyphonic lines, everything's possible on that instrument. At the, at the same time, you can blend in within different ensembles and experiment different sound worlds. So, um, in my case, usually I am in that spotlight and uh, usually I am the soloist, but I enjoy playing with other people and, for example, um, 
I, I suppose the repertoire that comes from my new album and the repertoire that we play live uh, now is mostly with some other people and I enjoy doing that. And you will be playing with um, numerous different people at Classic FM Live. You have been announced as one of, of our performers. Uh, it, I don't know if you've had a chance to, to sort of think about it or see who else you're performing with. I mean, what are you most looking forward to about being part of our spectacular evening? I'm really glad about this opportunity because um, in, in my short career I already had quite diverse uh, circumstances for my performances. You know, one day I, I play a recital in Wigmore Hall, another day I play in Ronnie Scott's, and then just a week ago I was playing on the grass uh, in Hampton Court, which was amazing. I love doing all those different um, uh, kinds of uh, stuff. And now coming to Royal Albert Hall is something truly, truly amazing. And and I'm really looking forward to that. And I hear that you are also going to be performing at the Wimbledon Tennis Championships. That's Is true. That, are you a tennis fan? I'm not yet, but maybe I will be. And what will you be performing actually inside uh, the, the complex? or? Well, I suppose um, people have to come and see because mm -hmm. I don't know yet. Okay, excellent. Martinez, thank you very much for coming thank to you. see us. Thanks thank you.